Hello, I'm Anika from Made to Sew and welcome to our fabric pumpkin tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be showing you how to make one of these pumpkins by sewing segments of fabric together. It's slightly trickier than our other pumpkin tutorial where you don't have to have a sewing machine. We'll put a link to the other tutorial in the description box below. But for this tutorial you're going to be sewing one of these fabulous pumpkins and we've got two different sizes. You can download the pattern for the segment from our website and again we'll put a link to that in the description box below. So if you don't fancy making a pumpkin from this you could also make yourself a rather wonderful pin cushion like we've done here. So let's collect up your supplies and let's get started. Let's start by looking at the materials and equipment you're going to need for creating your pumpkin shape. You will need to choose some fabric and a cotton or a lightweight upholstery fabric would be perfect for this. You may wish to use some felt, both if you're planning on using this for the pumpkin shape or as a pincushion. We use the felt for the pumpkin stem and we use a little bit of felt to cover the top and bottom edges on our pincushion. You are going to need some stuffing and we just used a 100% polyester toy stuffing. And in terms of the equipment that will be useful, you would be good to have a ruler, some scissors, a pen of some description, we've got a chalk or pencil here to draw around our templates, and a needle for some hand sewing. Now with regard to the templates, we've got two different size pumpkin shapes that you can download from our website. We've got a large size and a smaller size. I would recommend tracing these out onto paper or card so that they're easy to use for the process. Now during this tutorial we're going to be working with the larger size pumpkin. So I've taken the template and I've positioned this onto the wrong side of my fabric. Now there are grain lines that are drawn on the templates. You will need to measure from the grain line to your selvage edge of your fabric to make sure that it's straight. Or if you've got a pattern like I've got here, you would just make sure that the grain line is straight on your pattern. Now we're going to draw around the template. And you're going to need to do this eight times. So you need eight of these pieces. And I'm just drawing around this with a pencil, but you could do this with a bit of chalk, just something that is not going to mark the fabric tremendously and may come off. So once you've drawn around the template, you can then remove the template. And the templates do not have seam allowances added. So we're going to need to draw the seam allowance onto the fabric. Taking a ruler, you're going to measure from the drawn line that you drew previously, one quarter of an inch or five millimeters. And you're going to simply draw that all the way around. And again, you're going to do this for all of the eight templates. Once you've drawn your seam allowances around the drawn templates, you can cut them out and you're going to be cutting them out on the outside drawn line. So the seam allowance drawn line. And you're going to complete this for all eight of the shapes. One thing to point out is that if you'd wanted to quilt the fabric for your pumpkin shape, and as you can see this one here, we've actually used as a pincushion. So if you'd wanted to quilt the fabric, it will give it a little bit more strength and it does create a really nice shape. What you will need to do is to quilt the fabric first before you go through the process of drawing the templates, adding the seam allowances and cutting them out. If you'd like to learn how to quilt your fabric, you can follow the link in the box below to our quilting tutorial, where we will show you how to do this. We completed quilting lines here that were a quarter of an inch, five millimeters apart. And the wadding that we used was a 100% cotton wadding that was rather lightweight. You don't want to do this in anything too stiff because it would be very cumbersome. As you can see, I've cut out my eight segments and I'm ready to go. And the same applies whether you're working for the large or the small pumpkin. Now, I wanted to make it clear to you what to do if you had decided to work with a pattern. 
As you can see, we're working with the same fabric for this pumpkin, but you could choose to work with two different colors and alternate the colors. You could choose to work with three different fabrics, four different fabrics. It's really up to you and the design that you want to create on your pumpkin or your pincushion. Now, if you had decided to work with a pattern, you would want to lay it out now and lay out all of your eight pieces in the order that you want them to be in. And what we need to do now is to place them into twos. So we're going to position two, 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 and the other two that I've got down here together. And we're taking the one on the right side of the pair on top of it. So right sides of the fabric together, but the one on the right is turning over on top of the one on the left. And what this is going to do, if you follow this format, is to make sure that your pattern stays. So we've got the right sides together, and the one on the right was put on the one on the left. And what we're going to be doing now is to be sewing them along the same edge as well. To make sure that we're consistent with all of these pairs will mean that your pattern stays in the same direction as you have planned. So we're going to be sewing from the top here, down to the bottom, on the right side of this pair from the top to the bottom, on the right side of this pair from the top to the bottom, and the same on the last one. Now we already planned the order of this, so we're going to be sewing along the line that I'm pinning, and I'm going to be pinning together along the drawn line, that's the drawn line that we drew around the template. And I'm checking that that's going through at the exact same point on the back so that my drawn lines are together and that the shape therefore will be accurate. I'm positioning my pins into the fabric with the point facing up. I'm going to start sewing up here and sew all the way down. So I always want my head of the pin to be facing towards me, making it easy for me to remove the pin. And I would pin all of the pairs together along that one line so that you know the line that you're going to be sewing along, which was the right hand line if you're working with a print and want to make sure that this stays in the plan that you had. Sew along the pinned line. You want to start by going backwards and forwards to secure the stitching, and then you're going to sew along the whole length of that drawn line, which was the tracing of the templates. I'm doing this with a straight stitch and the length of 2.5 millimeters, obviously taking the pins out as you go. And then when I get to the end, I am going to back stitch as well to secure my stitching. So once you've sewn along the pinned edge, you're going to want to trim your threads and we also need to trim the seam allowance down because this will be really bulky when we actually create the pumpkin or pincushion. We want to cut this down to about one eighth, three millimeters away from the stitching line. And you want to do that along the whole length of this seam. And you're going to do the exact te same technique of sewing and then trimming the seam allowances down for all four of the pairs. So now, as you can see, I've sewn the right side of my segments and I've trimmed the seam allowance down. Now you want to lay them in the order that you decided on to start with. And the one on the left, you're going to open up so the right side is facing up. The one on the right, you're going to take an open and position the right side together. So this one's going inside the other one. And you need to make sure that you use the one on the right to go inside the one on the left, and the same for the other two pairs, because we're working currently with half of the pumpkin. And you're going to do exactly the same with the other half, again, keeping the order of your colored segments. We're going to be sewing the right hand seam as we did previously. So we're going to be pinning this together and sewing this side and you'll do the same with the other two segments that are now sewn together. 
One thing I also wanted to point out is that if you had a directional print, you would obviously need to make sure that all of the pieces were in the right way so that the, the directional print was facing up in the same direction in all of the pieces as you created this. So now I'm going to take some pins and I'm going to pin, as we did in the first step, the drawn line from the, this side to this side. I'm going to start with the point at the top and this is what's really important to make sure that you get a good finish. I've gone through with the pin on the point on this side and I'm going to go through on the point on that side as well to make sure that when I sew this it's correct. And then I'm going to work my way along pinning along the line on this side checking that it's along the line on the other side until I get to the bottom, when again I'm going to pin my points together. And you're going to do this, you'll have two of these now. So we've got four segments pinning two, two segment pieces together here, and you're going to have another one of those, because remember we've got eight segments in total. So I'll let you pin this and then join me at the sewing machine. At the sewing machine you want to pin along the pin line, we're going to start with a backwards and forwards stitch to secure everything and then we're going to be sewing along the drawn line all the way to the bottom, again going backwards and forwards when we get to the bottom, taking the pins out as we go. Now it doesn't matter if at the top and the bottom you go past the point a little bit, the key is to make sure that you at least go up to the point. Now you should see that you've got four of the segments joined together. You can see that I sewed on the right side of both of the segments to make sure that I had the order of my segments if they were to be different colours in the same position as they were when we started out. And I have trimmed the threads and the seam allowance down to about one eighth three millimetres from the stitching. Now for the final bit we need to join these two together. So again the one on the left is going to be opened out so the right side is facing up. The one on the right is going to be opened out with the right side going in to the one on the left and again we're going to be sewing this right seam here. Again as we did before you need to make sure that you pin the points together and that they come through on both sides and that you pin the whole of the right edge together so that it's ready to be sewn. Checking that the drawn line is pinned on both sides. So our segments are all going to be the same perfect size. Now you've pinned this, you're ready to sew and you should know how to do this bit by now. So you're going to start sewing at the top here, back stitch, stitch along the line, removing the pins as you go, stopping at the bottom with a back stitch. I'm going to let you do that, I'm going to let you trim your threads and I'm going to let you trim your seam allowance down to one eighth, three millimetres from the stitching. Then you can join me back here for what to do on the final row. So now you have one final area to join because the other areas have all been joined up. Now what we need to do here is exactly the same. We're going to position a pin at the top points and make sure that they match on the other side. You're going to be sewing from the top point down to about midway of the pumpkin shape and we're going to leave a gap in the middle, so from about here to here, and then we're going to sew from the bottom of the gap back up to the point. And we need to leave a gap so that we can stuff the pumpkin. So once you've put enough pins in, again pinning the drawn line to the drawn line, you can join me at the sewing machine and I'm going to show you how to sew this one. So we're going to start sewing at the top, just past the point. We're going to back stitch to secure the stitching and we're going to sew down 
until we get to about midway along the curve. You can put yourself little pins as sort of stopping pins if you would like. I would aim to leave about two inches, five centimeters of a gap. Now we're going to back stitch here and we're going to pull this out of the machine now. Now I took it out of the machine and we've left our gap and we're going to restart sewing here, backwards and forwards again to secure it, stitching along the drawn line until you get to just past the point at this end. Back stitching again to finish. As before, you're going to trim your threads and trim the seam allowance down to 183 millimeters. However, I would recommend that you don't trim around the gap area because it will be easier for us to hand sew if you leave it at the quarter inch five millimeter seam allowance. Once you've trimmed your seam allowance, you're ready to turn it around to the right side and you want to poke out all of the nooks and crannies to get everything out to the right side. Once you've got your shape turned around to the right side, you're going to stuff it. And we just used a 100% polyester toy stuffing. You really need to poke the stuffing into all the areas. And you do want to add quite a lot of stuffing so that it's really quite compact. Once you're happy with how you've stuffed your pumpkin, you're then going to position some pins to fasten the hole. And what we're going to complete here is an invisible stitch by hand that's often referred to as a slip stitch or a ladder stitch. Now I have a tutorial that's going to show you how to do that and I'll put a link in the description box below so that you can follow through to that tutorial and sew up the hole or the opening that we've left here. So once you've sewn up the hole in the pumpkin with the invisible stitch, we're then going to do something that's going to make this into more of a pumpkin shape. We're going to put some stitches in at the bottom and the top to create more of a segment finish. To do that, you need to take a large needle and put a double thread through the needle, tying a knot at the bottom. Now you want to sew over yourself a couple of times at the bottom of the pumpkin to make sure that it's nice and secure when we pull this through. You're then going to position the large needle in at the bottom and you're aiming for this to come back out at the top. Now this is a little bit tricky and you may want to get some help from a friend or something to do this. Once you've brought it through to the top, you're going to pull on the thread so that you get a nice shape to the pumpkin. Then you're going to keep doing this by going from one side to the other with the needle until you've got a really nice indentation and shape in both the top and the bottom of the pumpkin. It would be great if you've got someone that can help you to do this, or otherwise maybe a pair of pliers would be useful. So now you're going to need to cut yourself a piece of felt for the pumpkin stem. We decided to use felt because it doesn't fray. Now for the large pumpkin you're going to need a size of two inches in height, which is five centimeters and five inches in width, which is 12 and a half centimeters. If you're making the smaller pumpkin, then please refer to our blog post. The link to the blog post will be in the description box below for the size. You want to draw your measurement with chalk onto your felt and cut it out. Then you want to roll it, rolling along the width measurements. So you're rolling up the width measurement, trying to keep both edges as neat as possible. And simply rolling that up until you get to the other end. Now you've got two options really for fastening the stem. You can either use a hot glue gun, position a tiny bit of glue along the edge here, and then that will hold everything rolled up and closed, or you can hand sew it. So I'm going to show you how to hand sew it. I'm going to position a pin in to hold these layers together and I'm going to get myself a needle and some brown thread. You would choose a thread that matched obviously the stem colour that you're working with. Now what you want to do is you want to tie a knot at the end of your thread and start from the back of the folded edge 
and I'm going to do a small little slip stitch working my way along. It doesn't really matter what stitch you do, just try and make it invisible. Um, but obviously if you didn't, if you preferred to just do a running stitch, it doesn't really matter because the felt is so textured, you'll find that it will sort of hide the thread that you're working with. So if you can see here, I've come out about an eighth, a couple of millimeters from the edge of my bit of felt. And I'm going back into the felt, I'm going directly on top of that into the felt, but in the side that past the edge. And then I'm going to go along for about a quarter of an inch, five millimeters, back up on the raw edge of the felt, about an eighth from the edge. And we'll pull that through. And you want to just keep working with that as we go along. So I'm an eighth, a couple of millimeters from the raw edge of the felt. I'm going into the main part of the felt directly above it, going along in the fabric and coming out about a quarter of an inch, five millimeters up. So my stitch length is about a quarter of an inch, five millimeters. I'm coming through on this side of the raw edge of the felt, about one eighth, three millimeters, going into the main part of the felt and moving my way along, just like so. But as I said, if you would prefer just to glue this, then a little bit of a hot glue gun or a little bit of glue will be perfect just to hold it down. And once you're done with that, we're ready to attach it to your pumpkin. Once you've created your stem, we then need to glue this onto the pumpkin. Now the easiest method to attach it is by using a hot glue gun. So I'm going to take the hot glue gun and I'm going to add a little bit of glue to the bottom of the stem. And then all we need to do is quickly pop that in to the center of it there and position that in place. And you should have that nicely stuck. Now before we finish, one thing I would recommend doing to make sure that you get a really professional finish is to cover the bottom side of your pumpkin or your pincushion. Now it just will cover that little area where we've been stitching backwards and forwards and make it all look very neat. What we decided to do was to cut a circle of felt and to again using the hot glue gun, glue that in position. Now you can see here for the pin cushion, we actually glued a circle on both sides because obviously we didn't need a stem. It just finishes off that area and gives you a really nice professional look to the item. So back with the large pumpkin, I've cut out a small circle of felt. Taking the hot glue gun again, I'm going to position some glue on the bottom of this circle. Now turning my pumpkin over so I can see the wrong side, I'm just going to put that little circle to cover all of the nasty finishing bits that we had there. And that should hold it in place. And there you have it. Hopefully you now feel able to be able to make yourself a sewn pumpkin in either of the two sizes or even a pincushion. I really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. Thank you for watching.